Yes, we can Great. hear you. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I want to start by thanking the, the organizers uh, for letting me give this talk uh, to present this work that was published last year. Uh, it's about signatures of irreversibility in microscopic models of blocking. And the, the idea is very basic. We just realized that there was a gap in the literature of the beach tech model, surprisingly, uh, that was about the measurement of the entropy production in uh, numerical simulations using microscopic models. So we, we basically did it, and uh, this allowed us to uh, study the equilibrium limits, the behavior at the phase transition of the entropy production rate, and uh, to detect signatures of irreversibility in steady state distri distributions. So that's basically uh, all I will be talking about in the next 10-15 uh, minutes. So let's start with uh, a little bit of motivation. Um, the, uh, the motivation comes from the fact that blocking, as you know, is a general non-equilibrium phenomenon, especially in two dimensions, because the same type of phase transition is not allowed uh, in passive systems, in the passive counterparts of uh, flocking systems, which are passive ferromagnets, where we have uh, particles which are equipped with a directional degree of freedom, something that is vector-like, and that comes with a symmetry that is the continuous rotation symmetry and ferromagnetic short range interactions. Uh, if we add to these ingredients self propulsion, then we have active ferromagnets, uh, beach sec like models. And in this case, true long range order can be observed even in two dimensions. So this apparently violates the, the Mermin Wagner theorem. And uh, this was known since, since the beginning, since the introduction of the beach sec model. But um, it is not self-propulsion per se that causes this effect. Uh, and this has been shown very clearly in 2020 by Hal Tosaki, uh, who showed that uh, if one builds a model that uh, where the particles are motile, self-propelled, but the dynamics fulfills detailed balance, uh, then there is no spontaneous symmetry breaking of the rotational symmetry in two dimensions. So this means that irreversibility is the key ingredient that is needed uh, to observe this blocking transition. So this motivates our interest in, in trying to quantify this uh, irreversibility in flocking models. And we decided to study the, the active XY model, which is a continuous time counterpart of the, the beach sec model that is just more analytically tractable. And uh, it consists in describing the system as a collection of active Brownian particles, uh, with, which have a constant uh, self propulsion speed V0. Uh, and the dynamics of the orientational degrees of freedom follows this uh, stochastic differential equation, where the, the deterministic part, the deterministic torque, comes from an XY Hamiltonian. And in this XY Hamiltonian, J is the strength of the interaction. We will set it to 1. And NIJ is uh, the connectivity matrix. It tells us whether bird I and bird J interact or not. And typically, since we're considering short range uh, ferromagnetic interactions, which are also reciprocal because they are derived from uh, from Hamiltonian in this case, um, we uh, we have that they depend on some notion of distance between the particles. So. Um, they depend on the on the positions on the special configurations uh, of our birds, uh, and as particles are motile, this can change over time. So this creates an effective time dependence of the n parameter uh, that appears in this x y Hamiltonian, and this is what brings the system out of equilibrium. It's the coupling between the external degrees of freedom that are the positions and the internal degrees of freedom that are these orientational variables. So if we want to compute the uh, entropy production rate, we need to specify the time reversal parity uh, of the coordinates. And we assume that the positions, um, we interpret x as the position, so we assume that they uh, transform as uh, even, even variables under time reversal. Uh, whereas we interpret V0 times E of theta as physical velocities. So they transform as uh, odd variables under time reversal. So theta is mapped onto theta plus pi. And with this prescription, we could compute to the entropy production rate. We found two formulas starting from these uh, equations for the active XY model, uh, which are equivalent in the steady state. The first formula uh, can be interpreted as the rate of dissipation of the stochastic heat uh, into the thermal bath. You can recognize is this uh, Naj sine theta i minus theta j that is proportional to uh, the, the torque, the alignment torque. So this is the basically the work that the alignment torque uh, makes uh, on the orientational degrees of freedom. And uh, the second formula can be obtained again from uh, the, the equations, assuming local detail balance uh, a la crux, if you want, it's or a a oh, no. Sorry? No, no, no. Uh, 
Um, can you repeat, please? I think that was an accident. I've muted the person. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, and okay, the second formula is uh, can also be obtained by uh, integration by parts from the first formula, neglecting uh, the um, the total variation of the x y energy. And the second formula can be interpreted as the work of some fictitious reshuffling forces that rewire the, the interaction network. Um, and uh, as a sanity check, we just I mean these uh, it is. Um, plausible to, to assume that uh, at the steady state, the XY Hamiltonian is constant, or at least grows sublinearly with uh, the time, uh, uh, the time length of the trajectory. And indeed, this was, uh, was realized in our simulations at the steady state. So having these two formulas, uh, we could uh, compute the, the entropy production rate from simulations, and we considered two variants of the model. The, a metric variant uh, where uh, the particles uh, interact only if they are within a distance r, and a topological variant of the model where we let each particle interact only with the first shell of Voronoi neighbors uh, in 2D. And these two models are known to exhibit a very different uh, phenomenology. Uh, notably, the, the first model, the metric model, has a first order phase transition. Uh, you can see that there's phase coexistence uh, at these intermediate values of the density uh, between a polarized and very dense cluster and dilute and disordered phase. And this is also reflected by the bimodality of the distribution of the number of neighbors. Whereas uh, in contrast in the topological model, uh, the configurations, uh, uh, the spatial configurations uh, look much more homogeneous independently of D, and the distribution in the number of, of the number of neighbors is uh, unimodal. Correspondingly, we find a uh, different uh, um, shape of the entropy production curves. The second one is in log log scale, uh, so the, it's hard to compare, but uh, we, we observe a kink uh, singularity at the, for the topological model, whereas in the, uh, in the metric model, uh, at least in the, uh, I mean, as we increase the size of the flock, uh, there seems to be a flattening in this region here where we have phase coexistence. Um, okay, uh, so uh, another thing that we, we can observe at a more uh, coarse grained level is that the entropy production rate roughly peaks um, at, the, at the transition point in both cases. And uh, it goes to zero in, uh, as the temperature uh, goes down, temperature is D here, or it can also be interpreted as the rotational diffusion coefficient of the, of the active Brownian particles, or as D goes to, to infinity. Uh, we can also replot these curves uh, um, as a function of the uh, rescaled uh, distance uh, from the mean field transition point for the metric model and see what is the residual dependency on the density. It seems to, to it seems that the entropy production rate uh, gets uh, lower as the density is increased. Um, in the topological case, we have the opposite trend with density. Uh, namely, it, uh, the entropy production rate increases as the density is increased, and this is just due to the fact that increasing density is has the same effect as increasing the soft propulsion speed. So this increases the rate uh, of reshuffling of the interaction network. Um, as I was saying, we, we can also observe from these curves that uh, there are two equilibrium limits that correspond to two well-known reference systems, the passive pair magnet uh, in the co-moving uh, re reference frame of the flock as D goes to zero, and uh, the ideal gas of active Brownian particles, which is also an equilibrium system, because in this case there are no interactions to probe uh, the non-equilibrium nature of, of motion. Uh, and uh, we can rationalize these two equilibrium limits if we recall that in the active XY model, all non-equilibrium effects come from the reshuffling of the interaction network. And this is suppressed uh, in the low temperature limit uh, because transverse diffusion is suppressed. And in the high temperature limit, because in this case, uh, the, the motion has low persistence and uh, these uh, suppresses reshuffling particles are just moving around their own positions. So the, the situation where reshuffling is most efficient is actually at the transition point because the, the motion is persistent enough to cause reshuffling and this persistence is not wasted into collective motion. And this can also be observed uh, by looking at the autocorrelation function of the interaction network. 
Uh, another thing that we could uh, observe uh, close to, I mean, uh, in equilibrium, the two equilibrium limits was the scaling with uh, D, uh, the rotational diffusion coefficient. And I will not go through the details of this, uh, but with a simple uh, approximation, we could um, predict the scaling, the power law scaling in these two regimes uh, as d to the one half uh, when d goes to zero and as d uh, to the minus two where uh, when d goes to infinity. And this is in good agreement with the numerical simulations, especially in the topological case. Uh, in, the, um, in the metric case, uh, this agreement is uh, still good uh, in the high temperature phase, but it, the, the prediction is, uh, is failing uh, in the low temperature phase where we have phase coexistence. Uh, in the remaining uh, time, uh, I want just to uh, mention how we detected signatures of irreversibility in steady state distributions. Um, again, we restarted from uh, this expression of the entropy production rate uh, for the active XY model that uh, is interpreted as the work of fictitious reshuffling forces. And here we need to compute the derivative with respect to time of the NAJ matrix. This is easy to do if we use this parameterization for NAJ that we used in the metric model. Uh, and, uh, and this gives, when we compute the time derivative, uh, a delta function that only selects pairs of particles at a distance equal to the interaction radius and multiplies this by this factor uh, that is uh, proportional to the um, uh, that, con that is equal to the projection of the velocity vectors onto the distance vector that connects bird i with bird j. And we, if we call q alpha phi the probability distribution of pairs of particles at distance r parameterized by these two angles in two dimensions, and we massage the first equation, the, yeah, the first equation, we obtain something that looks like this. So it's an average over the distribution of pairs of particles of this function epsilon alpha phi. And epsilon alpha phi is a function that does not depend on the parameters of the model. We can plot it. Uh, it looks like this. And uh, of course, as you can see, it's completely anti-symmetric under the transformation alpha, alpha plus pi, which is the fact that the time reversal transformation has on the coordinate alpha. Uh, so in order to have a positive entropy production, uh, we need to have an asymmetry in the distribution of pairs of particles, which was actually detect detected in our uh, numerical simulations. In this plot, uh, I'm showing the anti-symmetric part of the log of this distribution. And as you can see, there is a strong positive correlation with epsilon alpha phi. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that uh, this asymmetry is in fact a low dimensional manifestation of a more general uh, asymmetry, which can be derived for the XY model by imposing the condition of uh, irreversibility. It can, be, uh, it can be easily shown that uh, if uh, we want the entropy production rate to be positive, then uh, the steady state distribution uh, must satisfy this inequality, it cannot be symmetric under change of sign of the, of the V, uh, which means that uh, the irreversibility induces an explicit symmetry breaking in the steady state distribution. And more generally, this same type of inequality can be derived for uh, stochastic differential equations, uh, which have a completely irreversible drift term and uh, which have in their state variables some coordinates which are odd under time reversal. Um, and again, uh, I don't. I don't go to, through the details because I don't have time, but uh, the condition of irreversibility implies an asymmetry in the steady state distribution. And this is, uh, is quite general. So uh, with this, uh, I conclude. Um, I, I want to thank my, uh, the institutions that funded and hosted me during my PhD uh, when I realized this work, uh, MIT for current fundings, and my collaborators uh, on this project that started at the 2019 Boulder Summer School on theoretical biophysics. And thank you all for the attention. I'm, I'm ready to take questions. Okay, thank you, Fed Federica. We have time for one question, I think. Um, David had his hand up. Okay. Um, um, all right, yes. Um, uh, very nice talk. One thing that struck me is if you've looked at ways of generalizing it, because the um, behavior of EP as you go through what in the equilibrium regime um, would be a phase transition is a very underdeveloped um, issue, underexplored issue. And in particular, it strikes me that you could discretize your space and generalize 
So it actually, rather than just a two-dimensional continuous space, you had a network where as, um, up, as, uh, as individual quote particles change, among other things, they would be changing the local network topology. And in particular, it struck me that this might be related to various models of social networks in the literature, where people, which are very often modeled where people's opinions change with time and also who they are friends with or anti-friends with, enemies with, changes with time based upon locality um, in some sense. Obvious, I would not expect you already thought about this, but does that make any kind of a sense? Do you think one could go that way? It would be discretizing. You wouldn't be an SDE anymore, but in many ways that might make things simpler. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I mean, I needed to discretize to compute this uh, from numerical simulations. So there are some caveats related to the how you discretize uh, the strato and the heat convention and all that, but uh, if one pays attention to, to this. Uh, I mean, in the end, all the formulas that I wrote here are continuous time um, uh, writings of uh, the discrete uh, time uh, dynamics and the discrete time formulas that I use to compute actually the, the entropy production rate and to simulate the dynamics. But yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, one can do the same for, uh, for instance, uh, staying in the regime of active matter. Uh, the, can do the same for the, the original Vichsec model, which is defined at discrete times. It's a completely discrete system. Yeah, I'm just wondering more generally where we don't have like a, a two-dimensional continuous space underlying things, a simple grid, but an arbitrary network. So it's not even necessarily a planar graph or things like that, which is all over many many real world situations i think i think in in view of the fact that the the session is is running on yep. can we move this discussion to the to the to the discussion uh period thank you again oh, yeah, definitely definitely Federica. um 